Morning, day five. There's snow everywhere this morning, but I'm a bit later doing this, so it's all clean off the mountains. The sun's out. September the 1st, which is moose opening day in this area of Alaska. And yesterday we did a bit of glassing. We saw a couple of moose over there, but they weren't legal and we'd have struggled to get across the river. So we're gonna leave them and we're going to hunt this way this morning i'm going to try and get up onto that ridge and look down into that valley behind us cole came in yesterday and fetched both caribous out mark left us to go back into town so that was it me and ian and james making the best of the job at the minute we've just had breakfast and everything is unky donkey and we're ready to rock so we'll catch you in a bit Well, good morning. Yesterday was a reasonably quiet day. I think it's the exertions of the pack out uh, that are really revisiting me now. We lost Mark yesterday. He headed out into town with Cole along with his caribou. We've got another day here. It's the first day of moose season. So we're hoping to get up here, have a look at the, some of the ridges out behind us, ground that we've not covered yet, and see if any moose have popped up. Now we did see three bulls across the river yesterday, so we know there are moose here, but there was nothing that's shootable. There's nothing more than 50 inches, so we've got to keep looking. But one thing that is on our side is the weather. So if you kind of you know, have a look around, you know, beautiful bright skies, sunshine starting to break through, which bodes well for today. Of course, we want to try and hold off on the rain if possible, because that can make things pretty tough, particularly if we do get a moose down and we've got to pack it out. So yeah, big day ahead of us. We're all feeling a little bit sore. The success of the caribou a couple of days ago seems like a long time ago now. We've had a good breakfast. I'm going to pack up, head up onto a ridge just the other side there, see if we can have a look at the valley below. And hopefully we can spot some moose, so it's going to be a busy day. So, we're about to head out again. It's the first day of moose season. We shot the two caribou over on the far ridge. That's gonna be all covered in scent and dead carcasses and probably a grizzly bear chewing away on the carcass. So, the wind is blowing down the airstrip from behind us this way. And so our best bet is to get up on that ridge, see what's across on the valley on the other side, and then make a plan from there. Just quickly gonna go through what we're taking out today. Just the bare essentials, really. You can see we've put back on the fabric pack onto the pack frame. That's because we wanna be taking clothes, food, spotting scope, that sort of thing. If we do manage to get a moose down, we'll come back and then go back in the morning and pack it out. Starting at the beginning, I've got my water, and then I've got this Deer Hunter Track waterproof anorak. This is my favorite for walking in when it's raining. I've got a UPVC one, the hurricane version for my glassing, but this allows you to move and breathe. So that goes there in the bottom, along with the water. In the front pocket here, all the essentials. I've got my hunting licenses, my tags, uh, my photo ID. I've got my OKC knife. That's a sister to Excalibur, the smaller version. I'm not safe to have a long knife. Steve has to have that. Six spare rounds of ammunition. I've got four in the mag already. Head torch, bear paracord, mosquito repellent, and then tape for the end of the barrel. So that's all the basics in there. Into the top of the pack. Deer Hunter Avanti fleece jacket for when we're sitting on the side of the mountain with glassing. Now spotting scope. Now there is a spotting scope pocket on the side of the pack, but because it's empty, I want to try and balance the weight either side so that's gone inside. And then a pack fly, so waterproof cover just in case it rains. But that is all that's in the main body of the pack. And then in the side, we've got lunch. Now we split this between us. It's, uh, Three tortillas, the big one there is Stevens. He likes extra meat, so we put a big one in there. And then two small ones are for myself and Jim. Napkins, of course, because we are civilized when we're eating. And then in the bottom here, emergency bivy. Absolutely essential wherever you go on the mountain that you take this thing with you. You never know when you're gonna get caught out in a storm or worse still, if you get injured and then you need to cover yourself up, ready to be rescued. And then of course, the only other thing we've got then is Garmin inReach. Now I'll switch this on now. This will track every two minutes our location on the mountain. That's not only good for retrieving you if you get into an emergency situation, but it's also good for my wife, Claire. She can have a look online at home and see where we're at so she gets to be part of the adventure too. So as you can see, pretty lightweight and basic when we're going up into the mountains. Enough food and water for the day, but not too much weight that you're carrying around unnecessary equipment. We're hunting new ground today and take the opportunity to follow the river up the valley. Not only is it a beautiful walk, but the route also allows us to take advantage of the relatively flat terrain before heading up onto the plateau.
So we're only about half an hour outside camp, but it already feels like we're way up in the mountains. It's absolutely spectacular this morning, isn't it? Stunning. The sun's just broke through the clouds and reached over the top of that mountain. You wouldn't wish to be anywhere else on this planet, I reckon. We've been quite lucky this trip. You know, last time we came out, it pretty much rained every day. We had brief glimpses of the sun, but this trip's been completely different. The weather gods have definitely been with us. This is pretty warm. And if I was a moose in this weather, you're going to be led down. I'd be lying down. We have seen some moving around on the cliff up behind us. We're heading in the other direction at the moment, so see what's out there but you couldn't think of anywhere you'd rather be than here no definitely not a couple of river crossings down a couple more ridges to traverse and then we should be in position so let's get on then the rolling tundra gradually slopes upwards inexorably as we get further and further from camp we hope to find an elevated vantage point that will give us a comprehensive view of the valley however as we crest each ridge another appears in front of us we must patiently scour the ground we can see from each ridge before moving on to the next. It's a continuous cycle that we're confident will produce the results we're looking for. So we're about a mile and a half outside camp now. We've come up the elevation up into the plateau in between the two mountain ranges just to see what we can see. Now this is about as far as I'd like to kill a moose with 500 odd pounds of meat to carry back. It's quite a trek. The great thing about killing a moose at this sort of elevation is obviously as you're going up the pack is empty and gravity is helping you on the way down. The caribou that we packed out was just under a mile from camp and that was a pretty big task. We've got plenty more time so with a moose we'll have four or five days to pack it out. There'll be no rush but there is only two of us. Steve will mainly do the knife work and I'll mainly do the packing to start with and then we'll try and get it all back to camp. And that's another thing when you're out wilderness hunting, if we saw an 80 inch bull moose a couple hundred yards away it's fine knocking it down but we've still got to get it back and we've got to get it out of country. So what we're going to do now, we've got a great elevated vantage point up here so we can see quite a lot of the adjacent mountain sides. We're going to head over to a ridge just over there about 200 yards away and that lets us look into the valley and across. Now the wind is not in our favour at the moment but at least if we can spot something we might be able to move down and get a shot at it a little bit later on but this is kind of as far out as I think we want to go. And it was a lot harder work getting here to it was the caribou as well, wasn't it? Every time we get to a ridge it's a false plateau and then there's another ridge that comes yeah. on. We'll go and settle down, do a bit of glassing, have some lunch and then make a steady trip back to camp again. We know that there's no animals at the moment in this valley, now we can either sit it out or ask Cole to drop us somewhere that you've seen some more activity. So we've still got a moose and a black bear tag, still plenty of time so it's just a matter of being patient and just having a look at the country in front of us. The scenery is fantastic and just being here is a privilege so yeah, actually I'm feeling pretty chipper. This is where it's handy to have an experienced hunter like Steve alongside you to discuss the optimum strategy. Our skill sets are slightly different but complement one another, making us a formidable team. As usual, patience is the essential ingredient. If we keep scanning the tundra, something will eventually show itself. So while well, we sat down having a look out in the valley in front of us, I suppose now is a pretty good time to go over the optics I'm going to be using. As you've probably seen before, I'm using my Hawk Endurance 12 by 56 binoculars. These came with us last year. Uh, they're looking a little bit the worse for wear now, but they're still performing really, really well. Multi-coated optics, good solid rugged design. I like the 12 mag because it gives you that extra long range, uh, particularly when you're picking apart boulders and willow from some distance, because that's where the moose like to get into the thick stuff. Probably wouldn't use them for deer stalking in, because that magnification can work against you, but in this sort of environment, it's absolutely perfect. But the real hero this time has been this Hawk Endurance ED spotting scope. It's 20 to 60 by 85 millimeter configuration so I've got that 20 mag which is quite a wide field of view for scanning the hillsides but then you can also dial it right into 60 when you're going to get right in close. It doesn't cope too well with heat shimmer and there's a lot of sunshine out in the hills at the moment but it does have dielectric coatings and the optics so it has increased light reflectivity. It's also got back four pyro prism which gives you really good colour contrast. So you can turn this knob and it swivels left and right which means you can get comfortable in pretty much any position and what's quite handy is also this dual focus so you can get reasonably close with this one and then you can find focus with this one in front. So once you get yourself set up I'm using a Vanguard VO2 235 AP tripod. Incredibly lightweight but still very stable. You can get it to exactly the height you want. As you can see I'm sat on a bank here and everything's nice and level. So you can tighten everything up, keep it loose so you can maneuver it but tight enough that it doesn't get blown around in the wind and you can just sit here and comfortably glass all day. The important thing is really to get that detail and for that you need a solid base, 
good quality optics and plenty of light. It's also compatible for digiscoping if you have an adapter, uh, but as you've seen when we've been taking video footage of animals, I've just used the Hawk camera adapter, which slots straight over the eyepiece here, and you can just use either your iPhone or got my Olympus camera. So I can't see anything at the moment. First things I tend to do is try and scan quickly with the binos, and if I see anything which looks a little bit unfamiliar, then delve right in there with the spotting scope. But for now, I think a couple more hours this afternoon, see if anything else comes in. If it doesn't, we'll head back to camp, but I think this is just about the perfect setup for hunting in the mountains. Having reached the edge of our packing radius, we begin to circle our way back to camp. we take a slightly different route that offers an alternative view of the valley. It's entirely possible that animals have crossed the valley behind us during the day. We want to make sure we have all bases covered. After changing out of our hunting gear, we head over to investigate an abandoned hunting camp further up the airstrip. We gather a few pieces of old firewood to create a campfire for later this evening. It's been a lovely day out on the mountain. Got home a couple of hours ago, been scanning the slopes around us. We've seen a caribou, there's a, another moose across the other side of the river. Unfortunately, nothing over here. But as the sun's gone down, we've got the opportunity of going out again, seeing if we can get a time again. So we've got the Air Arms S510 TDR, got my sticks and a Steely Resolve. And back up. And Wildy's going to be running tail gunner for us in case any grizzly bears come and try and jump out of the bushes at us. The guys are a bit sick of sausage, so we're going to see if we can get some fresh time again for dinner. We can all but try. We can try. I follow the same route as before, scouring the brush for our little feathered friends. Unfortunately, they are far too clever for me, and it's sausage once again for dinner. As the shadows lengthen, Wildy sets about building our farewell campfire. I set up the chairs and get myself comfortable whilst the wild man works his magic. I can't imagine a better way to spend our final night in caribou country.